Today, a water-food energy nexus sits at the heart of sustainable development. We know that water issues affect women and girls majorly in a very different way. When it comes to food security, without water we cannot talk about food security. But here we are talking about equality, gender equality. So then how are we going to tie these three and make sure that whatever we do in gender equality, we have food security matters addressed and we also have water issues addressed for women and girls globally. You know, we drink clean, well-filtered, treated water on a daily basis. But this is something that, you know, is somewhat a privilege in the world that we live in today. And it's a privilege that over 2 billion people on this planet, about 35% of the world's population does not have. It's important for us, especially in view of climate change, where every one of us, whether we like it or not, is going to be forced to change. Agriculture is the single largest employment source and in sub-Saharan Africa and South Asia 60 to 70 percent of women work in agriculture. Drought and famine. Drought is a silent killer and it is a very difficult uh, uh, issue for us to tackle because it happens so slowly. We have crop losses, we have rising prices of essential commodities, we have loss of family savings. These are the silent tragedies which happen over and over again. Water systems are not evenly distributed and equally accessible. And it is often women and children, the elderly, people living with disabilities, and those living in rural locations who face the highest levels of vulnerability. Women have less access and control over land. Inequalities, often deep-rooted stereotyping, prevent women from having careers in water and as such are greatly underrepresented in water governance fora. We are stressors caused by climate change and water insecurity is pushing us into other kinds of stressors. We have migrations caused by climate change. We have uh, stressors within countries, fights between people because of climate change. And all this water insecurity is really affecting the women whom I like to call the foot soldiers of climate change. Women very often are left in the villages to manage families, to manage old people, while men migrate out. That causes an entire set of new problems for women, especially because, you know, they, uh, they are very often in uh, communities, they are the ones who have the least amount of awareness of techn uh, agrarian technologies, they are the ones who have the least amount of connection with agencies which can give them the seed, the pesticides, the weedicides that they need. All the promises which we are made, all the promises that we are given before the election does not happen after the disaster. One of the critical decisions taken in The Hague was accessing political decision makers. But if we can convince decision makers that food security is not only going to be handled by the Department of Food, it is also going to be done by so many other organizations which look after catchments, which look after water quality, which look after health, you know, all the bundling the SDGs in one, I think this is something which, is, which I would like to see happen. So we are ready now to engage the first gear, is that so? So optimists are all over the world. All these problems are facing women and girls globally. We have to take action now. Not just awareness, real action, and we partner with our government and everyone else out there. So before you start a project, I would really want you, with all your commitment, with all your common sense, and all your sense of integration, it's not only something on food security. It is not only giving toilets. It is not only doing a program for uh, children who have been abused. Please try and look at the big picture. That every single one of us in this room here today can play a role, you know, an active role in, in, in helping, you know, create awareness, you know, looking for solutions to the problem that we have um, in, in hand. 